in the trenches with Ryan Roxy. It's been a long work in progress, you know, and uh, it's and it's 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 and it's a lot of people, you know what I mean? Like that's been involved yeah. in it. You know? I think the, the best first, the best way to start off is with the name Crossbone Scully, because I had never heard of a Crossbone Scully, what it is. Uh, where where did that character's name and where did this this person Crossbone Scully come from? Well, I'll, I'll, for, first I just want to say Scully started with Joel Reef. You know what I mean, our old lighting guy, when we were on tour with the uh, you know because he tours he toured with Alice and he toured with the Vampires. So what happened would be me and Glenn would be doing soundtrack for the Vampires. We'd be always playing like ACDC songs, and Joel one day came up to me. He's like. Uh, what are you doing, man? I go, what do you mean? He goes, are you doing that for real? Or are you just fucking around? Because you like, were doing your, you were doing your voice. Yeah. I was yeah, like, dude, I'm just messing around. And he's like, he looked at me, he said, you're missing something, man. You're missing a big opportunity. You should really think about that. And I looked at him, I was like, ah, I haven't done that stuff since back in the days, you know, when we were playing the clubs. Like when we would do the clubs back then, it was always like, you were honing your craft. They, kids can't do that anymore. We were playing like three sets a night, you know. Yeah, so yeah. we'd sing everything for me. That was people. literally being in the trenches. That, yeah. you know, playing the clubs, three yeah. sets a night, doing cover yep. shows, cover songs. I call it the international set list. And you try to, every once in a while, try to maybe mix one of your own in there. Maybe people wouldn't get it. <laughs> you know, maybe they get it. Yeah. So Somebody anyway, so I, I took that and we had a break. And then I think we were going back on tour with Alice. And I, I was home for like, I think it was like, I don't know, like two weeks, two, three weeks. And I was like, you know what? Let me just write a couple songs. So I'll, I'll do some ACDC sound stuff, see what it sounds like, you know? Yeah. And I started playing it. And the first song I did was uh, Boom Went the Boom, and uh, which is hopefully the next single, which is my favorite song on the record. Mm -hmm. um, so I was I was messing around with it. And I was like, I was like, you know what? Yeah. This sounds pretty good. And I was like, I thought, you know, and I'm sitting there going, this, I think this might be able to, I might be able to do this, you know, because it was like one of those things. It's like, you, you, well, if, you Lon Chaney, all, if Lon Chaney is the face, uh, the, you know, a thousand faces, man of a thousand faces, you're the man of a thousand voices. Cause I've, you know, you've, for years and years, we've, you know, you know, me and you are the bookends that sort yeah. of our voices blend really well together yeah. on the stage, but you are, have a really good capability of, you know, mimicking an Alice voice if you need to, or going something really high and soft or something, you know, as a Scully, uh, you know, how Scully transcends through you. And it sounds, it's the perfect blend of a rock, a really good rock voice with, with melody and hooks. Well, thanks. I, I appreciate that. You know, so I did like a couple songs and, you know, and Bon Scott's always been one of my favorite singers, his lyrics, everything about Bon Scott. I was like, he's got balls. He's got character. It's like when I look at a singer like Bon Scott, I go, that's the guy because he's tough, he's sexy and he's rough. And, you know, you know, Bon and the lyrics, man, they, they like they speak to me, you know. So anyway, so. I, I wrote a couple things, and uh, it was funny because then I sent it to uh, Tommy Denander, who we've done a lot of stuff with, with Alice right. and all these other things that we've done together. And I didn't have time to really play guitars on it because we were getting ready to go back and forth. So I called up Denander. I was like, dude, you want to play guitar on this stuff? And he's like, yeah. So I sent him, like, a couple songs, and he calls me back. He goes, he goes who the fuck is this? And I, I, sorry, I won't curse <laughs> anymore. I you said, can curse uh, all you want. You you know what, T? This is the podcast, and I always put uh, that it has explicit language, knowing in yeah. advance that you'd be on the show, and you can't help yourself. Go ahead, drop yeah. some f bombs. But, I, I'll try. but what, it was really cool because I, I sent it to Denand, and his reaction was like, "What is this?" I go, "It's me." He's like, "No, it's it can't be." I go, "Yeah." I go, "He goes really." I was like, "Yeah." So I said, "Just put some guitars to it." So. He put a bunch of guitars to it. And then he said to me, hey, you know, if I got time, can I write a couple of riffs? I was like, yeah, dude, of course. So that's how it started working. Then we were just fooling around, you know? And then I did a bunch of stuff for Solo Dallas, Phil, because uh, this is on like COVID too, man. This I is remember like you were doing some ACDC covers, right? You were doing- uh, Dude, Phil helped me out. You know, it's like, 
we need money. You know what I mean? So I've sold <laughs> all my cars. I've you sold- do what you got to do. I love the fact that, that we've always been survivors in that sense. It's like you do what you got to do, which I got to talk to you about a gig after the podcast is done. Yeah. I hope Scully approves, but yeah. we'll talk about it after. Yeah, so, so, <laughs> so, so that happened, and, uh, and we started working all this stuff. And then Tommy and myself, we wrote, I don't know, we got like 30 songs that we did. Like, and like, because we work – at a pace, seriously, that it's like 106 people wouldn't, they honestly, they wouldn't believe how it's not fast. It's just like, it's just, we know, you know what I mean? What we want. And he's such an amazing guitar player. Like, you know, like all I got to do is say, dude, play something like David Gilmore, do Jeff Beck over here. Give me Chuck Berry. You know what I mean? Like this guy could do anything. So anyway, so I do that and we do all these songs and um, I'm in LA this is like 2019. I'm mixing it because I was like, you know what? Let's just put this out. I'm thinking about putting it out on Bellyache Records again. You know what I mean? I'm like, well, put Balachi. it out. We all love yeah. uh, Balachi is probably watching right now. Shout out to Balachi Records, everybody. Yeah. So <laughs> then I'm sitting there and, you know, I'm at JD's place, Johnny's place. And, you know, his studio's downstairs. Mine's upstairs. And, uh, and downstairs, you really can't hear when people walk in because I got it like so loud. And I'm sitting there cranking the shit out of this thing. In and case people of- don't know, yeah, the Johnny we are talking about is Johnny Depp. And you have all your studio equipment at one of his houses that was, you know, while the trial was going on. I'm sure that house was mentioned a few times uh, during the whole entire thing. And probably a few of the events that happened uh, were, were at, around that area. I mean, I'm glad to see that all your recording equipment made it out safe without anything, you know, no defecation on it or anything like that. Your, your, everything was good with your, yeah, no, uh, <laughs> your studio equipment, right? But dude, <laughs> uh, it was just, uh, you know, so I was just working on stuff because I was like, ah, let me just mix it. We'll put it, put it out there and we'll do it, you know, to see what happens. And all I remember is I was playing, I was doing Bone Machine, this song called I'm a Bone Machine. And um, I just I just feel this tap on my shoulder, and I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. And I'm like, Who's that? <laughs> it's Ross Halford, and he's like, Tom A. I can't do Ross's act, but I'll try. He's sure like, you he's can. Like, what, sure you what can. What is this jite? And I look at him. I go, why? And he said something like, uh, he goes, because uh, I think it's quite good. And I, I went, wow. really? What's Ross hates everything, you know? Yeah, I was going to say, what Ross. is this shite is probably the biggest compliment that Ross Halfin's ever given anyone. But <laughs> what is he, this shite? But I do respect his musical opinion and everything because he's pretty he's pretty on point about a lot of stuff. I give him that, man. You know what I mean? Right. And I turned around. I said, well, you're probably going to hate it even more. He goes, why? I go, because it's me, Ross. And he's like, no, it's not. You can't <laughs> sing like that. And I was like, uh, yeah, I can. So then... Um, you do a good, really cool. you do a good Ross Alfred. So, so, so the name is coming. I'm sure it is. At p- one point, who gave that name to you, or I, where well, did it I'll come you to you from? I, I just got. I, I'll make it a little quicker. Um, so, what happened was Ross says, uh, you know, um, I want to play it for a friend of mine uh, at, at some record company. I want to bring him up here. So I was like, okay, no problem, Ross. I was like, but I'm not looking. You know, I'm just want to put the thing out. Ross is like, no, tell me. That. So it's cool. Ross brought this dude up. This guy. And um, this guy looked at me. He's like, "I want to sign this," and I just started laughing. I was like, <laughs> "Of course you do, <laughs> you know." If I was twenty-five, I'd be like, "Really?" Mm. So when he says, "I want to sign," I was like, "Okay, cool." I was like, "I'll tell you what. When I finish this, uh, I'll, I'll send it to you." He's like, "All right, no problem." So I go back to Switzerland. This is like two thousand nineteen, late January, early February. I call up the Nanda, and I go, "You know what, man?" Because Tommy's been telling me for the past, I don't know, 10 years that, you know, my buddy's not lying, you know, and all these other things. I was like, okay. You Little know, story. I'm, hold on. I, I, I just want our audience to catch up, follow along with us, because a lot of people will say these names like everybody knows them because we all know them. Right. We, we read the liner notes of all our favorite albums, and I'm sure our uh, audience has too. But just to catch a little backstory, Mutt Lang, producer of pretty much all the amazing ACDC records, all the amazing Def Leppard records, and of course, all the amazing Shania Twain records. Brian Adams too, dude. <laughs> well, no, he's produced everyone, but I had to put Shania Twain yeah. in there just so Vic can go find the internet and find a picture of Shania Twain real quick, which he's probably trying to do. So Mutt Lang somehow gets in the mix on this 
you know, because he's friends with Tommy. And then you got yeah. this thing. Now it's rolling. Things are rolling. It wasn't rolling at all. It was no, like one of those rolling. things where it was just like, I said to Denanda, I go, why don't you play this for your buddy Mutt? Because I'm thinking, you know, I'm thinking I the it was full of shit. Yeah. <laughs> so he goes, ah, oh, no, no, no. You know, something like, like, you know, Mutt, he's saving rainforests and he's retired. He doesn't do this anymore. I was like, what do we got to lose, dude? He's like, okay. So he sent it to Mutt. And this is February now, 21st. I get a phone call. I, I got a little document. I wrote a lot of stuff down because I wanted to really, I, was some, one of those moments in my life, I was like, this is a very important moment in our life right now. And I remember Denanda called me up on my birthday. I was skiing with Mr. Finn. No, I don't ski, but I get this phone call like, dude, happy birthday, motherfucker. Something like happy birthday, fucker. And it hangs up. I'm like, next, next, next call rings. I see the Swiss number. I'm like, I don't know anybody in Switzerland. <laughs> so, right. You've like, only lived there for now like 10 years. I know. Right? You know you know? <laughs> so I see this number and this guy goes, Tommy Henriksen. I go, who is this? He goes, uh, I'm not lying. I got your number from uh, Tommy Denanda. And I went, what? I go, come on, come on, dude. Don't be fucking punking me right now. You know what I mean? I was like, because I said, like, you're my favorite producer. I know Denanda put you up to this. I was like, you sure this off, isn't man. Ross Alphin? <laughs> you know, so he goes, no. He goes, uh, Tommy sent me the, the music. And I went, what? I said, so you actually know him? And he was like, he laughed a little. He's like, yeah, I do. I was like, um, can you hang on a second? I remember putting the phone down and going, no, man, this can't be real. You know, honestly, I almost started crying my eyes out because I was like, oh, my God. I was just like, holy shit. Mm. So I get choked up from that. So then... um. I get back on the phone and I go, uh, I go, what's happening? He goes, uh, listen, I, I got this song and uh, I want to play around with it. I think you got something here, mate. And I was like, really? <laughs> I was like, are you sure? He goes, no. He's like, you're saying some stuff here. He's, you're saying some stuff here. He's like, he's like, send me a track. I'll fool around with it. I'll send it back to you. And I was like, uh, I got no money. <laughs> at least you were up front with him right out of the Dude, gate man. It's like, I said I got no money and he's like uh, Tony I don't need any money he goes let me just play around with it so I was like okay I hung up the phone I called Fernanda back I go dude he goes much loving this stuff and I was like I, I, I don't know what to do I should, today st I still feel the same way where I go it's still unbelievable to me you know yeah, so yeah, it's, great. I it's a great story, man. I, I, I the thing is, I, I can completely understand why he would like it. It fits. It ticks so many boxes of what Mutt Lang's about. Huge choruses, uh, big hooks, big guitar riffs, and then you know your your sort of approach to putting on vocals is a lot like or similar to Mutt's. Because you like, and you actually learned how to produce a lot of your background sure. vocals from those Mutt Lang right. Uh, albums, right? Yeah, I've learned so much. So the whole thing with Mutt was there was one point where I said to him on the phone, I said, uh, Mutt, you know, I'm not a young guy. You know, I'm an old guy. <laughs> and he says, uh, he said something to the fact like uh, a young a young person hasn't lived your life or something. So, I don't want to misquote him, but he said something that was like, wow. You know, because I had to tell him, I was like, I'm not some young kid, dude. That's like right. 25 years old, you know? It's willing, willing to sign the first record contract that comes their way. I so, get you. So it was like one of those things where I was like, wow, man, this guy actually, so week, week or two go by, I forgot how long it was. Um, and I see this email, it says the boom went to boom. And it's from Mutt. And I, and I look at it and I go, oh man, I don't want to listen to it. I walk in the room and I said, I said to Sandra, I go, listen, I need to sit in this, I need to sit with this for about an hour. She's like, what is it? I go, I, I can't even explain to you because she doesn't know what Lang is and that stuff. You're so explaining I, it now. I love it. So, so I went into the room and probably this you know, room that you're in right now. Exactly. I went, right here. I went in the room, I put on my headphones, I pressed play, and all of a sudden I heard the intro. I went, oh my God. And I saw crying like a fucking baby, dude, because I was like, this is what it's supposed to sound like, man. You know, and um, I was sitting there going, holy shit. And 
I was, I remember I listened to it for about 45 minutes and I called Denanda and I go, dude, and Denanda's like, and what we trust. And I was like, <laughs> I, I, I was like, so I call him back and I go, Mutt, uh, anyway, I don't know what to say, but can I just fanboy out for a second? <laughs> and he starts blasphemy. And, Please uh, just proceed. And I go like this. I go, uh, you, you know, every time, every, I've always tried to make records that always sound like you. As I try and sing backgrounds like you, he says, yeah, I know, I notice. You know what I mean? And and all these things. And uh, I said, I just want to tell you that this is like, it's an unbelievable opportunity for me to even have you listen to music, you know, that I'm much part less, of. Much less being a huge part of it. Yeah. Dude. So, and I said, I said, I can't thank you enough. He's like, listen, he's like, he's like, so do you like the track? I was like, like it. I go, dude, this is why he's the best producer who's ever lived. I go, this sounds fucking incredible. He says, so you want to carry on? And I went, what? I was like, what do you mean? He goes, send me everything you got. And we already had like 17 songs. So I was like, and that was it. And then we were off to the races, dude. And then uh, you're like Charlie in the Chocolate Factory. Willy Wonka just gave you a golden ticket with that one. Him, of course, Mutt Lang being Willy Wonka. And I mean, there's so much to it, but I'll I'll I'll, I'll leave more of that to out. But anyway, Again, so I'm trying to get I'm trying to get to the point of where I know you, this album becomes more than just an album, becomes okay. a concept and becomes an alien. Thank you, in, in, thank there you, you very go. much. Keeping so, you on point, T. Just can't to keep you on point. So when we started doing the record stuff like that, I'd be, I'd be throwing ideas around with Denanda because we're all like, we, we like UFOs and space and all that kind of stuff. And uh, and I was like, man, it'd be really cool, if, you know, because I wanted to write stuff about stuff that I know about, you know what I mean? And Crossbone Scully, the way that the name came up, I was Googling stuff like, protest songs and songs about poverty and all these things because it's like that's my life you know and there was a song put by aunt molly jackson called cross bones skull and i was like huh that might be a good name for a band so i put it down i just wrote it down but i was like cross bones scully and then i and i had another one called uh it was an uh i forgot the i had like three names and uh and i said Danette, i go what do you think He's like, oh, Crossbone Scully, that's the one. I was like, all right, cool. So then we started talking, and then uh, Denander again, he said to me, he goes, we should get Mark Wilkinson to do the artwork. And I was like, how are we going to get him? Mark, okay, now here we go. Mark Wilkinson, we got to have a little bit of a backstory on this because I was going to bring up Mark Wilkinson because uh, he actually did collaborate a lot, and we'll do it in a little bit of a uh, later segment that we have yeah. named that voice. But uh, Mark Wilkinson, he was the one that, great art director, but he's worked with so many uh, huge, huge bands. Judas Priest, the biggest one probably being the iconic Iron Maiden. Is he the, is he the sort of artist behind Eddie? Is that Mark? Uh, or not the original guy, but Mark's been with them for a long, long time. And um, he, so, and Mark is another guy who retired and uh, he was out, but Denander contacted him. And so uh, we sent them a couple songs. And right away, Mark Wilkinson was like, how the, f another English guy, how the fuck did you guys get Mutt Lang? <laughs> I was like, uh, what do you mean? Because we weren't going to tell anyone, you know? Right. And um, so what, So we contact Mark. Mark's like going, I'm in. What do you want? So I was like, I want to do like an alien, dude. I want to do an alien like a pirate. You know what I mean? That has like characteristics of kind of things that I wear and things that I do and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Right. And uh, I wanted a pirate, like a swashbuckling pirate who's coming back to like a Robin Hood to save, you know, people who are worth saving and, uh, and fighting corruption and all of this stuff. I wanted a record, dude. That's like something to say. I don't, I, I want to say something. It's like, all I do is I hear music. I go, what are you guys saying? It's, right, like, it's like right. it's like it's so stupid i hate to say it but it's just like i sit back i go i can't put music out like that i gotta you know it's like you wanted you, you wanted to have a point you wanted to have people think about it but you also didn't want people just to think about the artist singing it because that's why you made a character and there's a character with a bunch of supporting characters to it 
and, and the thing was, when Mark brought Scully to life, I was like, oh, my God, there it is. Now I know where we're going with this thing. That when Mark did that, when we saw that drawing, I went like this. I looked at Scully. I went, man, you're about to come to life. And I never forgot it. And I was like sitting there going, oh, my God, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? This is great. Now I know what we're doing here. Now we got Crossbone Scully. We'll figure out a story and we'll do this thing because then we got this over here and we could use this. And, dude, it was, it's been a lot of, like, going back and forth with so many people that I've, like, talked about this with, where ideas, with stories and everything where the story started it's turned all the way around. But the different um, the, the, the difference is, is you've been able to talk about it but turn it also into a reality. And now that reality is that that single is out today. And you have a host of collaborators that have helped with all the characters that have been developing. So, okay, Crossbone Scully gets developed first. Who was the next character in the story that came about? And, you know, maybe we can go through a little bit of this list of characters. Well, the next character that came about, I was talk I talked to Coop about it all the time, like, because Alice is so good about this stuff. I said to Coop, I said, I got I to pick your brain on some stuff. I got this story here we're working on. I was like, take a look at it. And he looks at me, he goes, nah. I played it for my buddy Lewis. Play you know, like my buddy Lewis is great, like really writer. Joel, I mean, I was throwing this around everyone. And, but Coop was the one, he said, Coop and Lewis were like, it's gotta be a love story, dude. He's like, every big blockbuster movie is about a love story. And I was like, oh, God damn it. You know, cause I was like, I, I it is I true. It's true, man. It's either saving the world or a love story. And you've got both. If you think so, about it. And the whole thing, it's like, it's the lyrics are kind of like my life. You know what I mean? It's like, it's about, I, I feel the record is about survival. You know, it's like I was work, uh, they would, I did this thing with uh, the guy who was writing up the bio, this guy Roy. And he said to me, he's like, you know, Tommy, uh, you know, you've been second banana your whole career. And I looked at him, I was like, yeah. And he's like, this New York guy, he was really funny. He goes, so, you know, but, uh, you know, I mean, you're doing this record. He's like, it's amazing. He's like, but, uh, you know, is this like to spite people? I looked at him, I said, Roy, he said something like that. I was like, uh, Roy, no, no, no. I was like, this record, dude, it's about survival, man. I go, it's about everything that we've all been through. You know what I mean? Like, not only myself, but all of us, you know? Yes. Like, all of us have been through, like, struggles, hardships, mental health, depression, you know, where's the next paycheck coming from? All of these things, dude. You know, like, I like I sit back and I go, you know, I got to write all this down. Because it's like this, you know, and, and the thing about the record is it's not about politics. It's not about religion. It's not about sex. It's about everything, you know, and uh, everything that I like. And um, and some of the stuff, you know, it's it's going to, you know, definitely uh, have people saying something. I don't know what, but I'd rather have people talking about it instead of being some like like Paul Stanley said if you like kiss that's great if you love kiss that's okay but if you're in the middle get out you know <laughs> I can't believe that uh well Paul is not one of well you don't know if Paul's one of the collaborators in on but this Alice, Ryan. But, but Alice was the one that gave you that thing it's got to be a love story so which was the next character that, that evolved so the next character that came up I was like going, oh my god it's a love story so we had we were thinking first character we had with scully was all right the big bad bone crush we wrote a song called big bad bone crush you mean banana and uh and then i was like oh that's cool and then i was like fooling around with, like names and characters and stuff like that and we'd be throwing them back and forth and then um i said to coop one day every morning i, I like whenever i'd see him at breakfast because you know sometimes i'd go to breakfast with guys at golf but i picked his brain i'm like coop what do you think of this he's like nah there's got to be a source to scully's reasoning why scully is like coming back to earth he yeah. goes what is the source and i'm looking i'm going i don't know one night before we're going on stage and i forget it the frankenstein intro well you know the intro to the show is being played and he walks over he looks at me and he goes i got it i look at him i didn't know what he's talking about because this was like a week ago he goes the sorcerer and i went what he goes the source to scully's evil is the sorcerer and i went Feed my, I was like, get out of here. I run up on stage, you know. I look at him, I was like, we got on stage. Like, cool. I've never even heard that story. I've never heard that. That's cool. So then the sorcerer, and all of a sudden, I was like, okay, now we got Scully's gonna be battling against the sorcerer. And I'm like, thinking, all right, it's a sorcerer. 
it's got to be like like music. It's a frequency. Then we had the song we did like uh, I think it's called War Drums, which will become because we we have so many songs, dude. We have like. Re realistically yeah. tell people you know to tell people to enjoy this record but don't worry i'm ryan roxy and i've taken all my years of experience of playing guitar and i want to pass the torch of rock and roll on to you check out the system 12 guitar method